Let everything that has breath say amen. 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 Thank you for that powerful inspiration on this day. That we continue. (laughs) And on this day, we praise our God. We praise our God that our God is with us through all seasons and through all times. And God is with us on this day as we remember. On this day when we remember 15 years ago today. In this region, 184 of our beloveds died in the attack on the Pentagon. The total loss was 2,977 people, beloved souls, from 93 nations. On that day, America changed. Yet it was a global event, and on that day, our world changed. Though it may be painful, it is so important that we stop and remember. And yet those numbers that I just offered are not merely numbers. The the impact can't be measured by numbers so cold. For it was children and parents, co-workers, lovers, friends, and neighbors that carry that loss. In our scripture today, we see that The shepherd is looking for the lost sheep, and we see a woman looking for a lost coin, searching for what was lost. And since that day, 15 years ago, there are many who are still searching for what was lost on that day. Some are searching for that sense of security that was shattered on that day. Some are searching for the sense of peace that was lost on that day. Every one of those numbers had a name. And some are still searching to fill that empty space that was lost with that beloved who died that day. As we look at our scripture today, is it possible that such loss as I just described and that we all feel is somehow held in tension with what's been found? Even this week as we listened to eyewitness testimonies, as we heard people tell their stories, as we heard people remembering and reflecting, some have spoken of having found a greater appreciation for life. So so in the law, something is found. Some have testified to the strength and support that they have found in others. Some discovered a network, a community that they never knew they had. Some have found since that day 15 years ago the courage to look fear in the face and stand tall and high and do what seemed impossible. Some have found even in the losing. And yet that too is held in tension with with what's been lost. I'm saddened by the relations with the Muslim community that have happened since 9-11. I'm saddened that globally there is increased division. Losing, finding. Our scripture from Luke 15, 1 through 10 poses questions about losing and finding. The parables today are described as the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin. And in the stories today we see that there is great, great joy in finding what is lost. Both of these stories speak to a God who invites wholeness. A God who is always with us in the search for what is lost. Both stories speak of this amazing celebration. The way that Luke presents this parable, he makes it more of an allegory. And some have seen these more as stories of sin. Uh, The Jewish scholar Amy Jo Levine says it's really not about sin. It's about community coming back together If it was about sin, then it must have meant that the lost sheep must have been eating some non-kosher grass, and we know that that's not true. (laughs) They speak of finding what is lost, and a God who invites everyone to the table. The one who lost that coin was so glad that she found it, that she threw a party that probably cost more than the coin that was lost. 
That's how much God wants us to rejoice and celebrate each other and the community that we have, bringing together that which is lost. And yet, the question beneath the question is, what do we do during those times? When we look and look for that lost lamb and we don't find it. Or what if somebody else finds that lost coin and spends it all during happy hour? Or what about in the story of the lost sons, the beloved son never comes home? Is the presence of God, even joy, still a possibility, even when our prayers don't seem to lead to the happy ending for which we hoped? What do we do when we lose and we still haven't found? How do we deal with with loss. This last Tuesday night, 17 of us gathered together for Bible study, and the topic that night was dealing with loss, and I want to thank Kathy Batson for leading an incredible conversation. I'll not share any specifics about that because it's a safe space, but what I would share is that there were several threads that came through that conversation, and one of the things that came through is that during times of loss, one way to deal with it is to find someone to deal with it with you. One theme that kept coming through again and again and again is the importance of community, which echoes the theme of our scriptures today. Finding strength in each other. Someone who will listen. Others talked about the importance of drawing on the strength of scripture and letting that scripture begin to strengthen our soul, marinating in that scripture, walking with it, praying it. We had a list of scriptures that we looked at that night and we talked about them and how they spoke to us and how we found strength. Another thing that came through is that many in that group who had experienced incredible loss were still dealing with the pain of that loss, which is part of the paradox of our faith, how we can lose and we can find and we can celebrate like crazy and praise God like crazy and stand on that rock and on the other hand, feel something that hurts. The hurt and the pain, the love and the grief, they all are mixed together. So we live with it. And yet we find a solid place even in the living with. Psalm 42 is a scripture that I think offers us some great reflection on what to do during times of loss. The psalmist writes, I waited patiently for the Lord, and God inclined to me, reached to me, and heard my cry. God also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of miry clay, and set my rock upon my feet and established my comings and my goings. During times of loss, this is a scripture that offers us something to hold on to. God brought me up out of a horrible pit. Loss can feel like that. Grief can feel like that. It can feel like being in a pit with no rope or no ladder or no staircase or seemingly no way out. This is where the psalmist said, God inclined to me. What it means is that when there is no ladder, no rope, or no staircase, God has arms that are long enough to reach us where we are. A God who comes to us right in that place and says, I am with you. Fifteen years ago, many found themselves in that place. All they could see was dust and rubble and hurt and loss. And there was no quick fix and there is no quick fix, but there is a God with arms long enough and a heart big enough to reach and hold and embrace and reclaim. God brought me out of the pit. God brings us out. God saves us. That is salvation. And then God's not finished yet. God set my feet upon a rock. God takes us from that place and then puts us someplace solid. 
the song that opened our service today, talked about that rock. (laughs) Jesus is that rock. Our hope is that rock. Our faith is that rock. We sing on that rock. We never knew how we would get there again, but we find ourselves in that place, standing on that solid rock of faith. Solidity. Oh, those buildings shook and they fell, and we wondered if anything solid was left. And God said, come with me, and I will take you there, and I will help you to stand again. Yes, there is a solid place in a world that shakes. Then I think we're offered the most important part of this verse. After God sets our feet upon a rock, God establishes our comings and our goings. For our purposes today, I would add to that, God establishes our losings and our findings. In the midst of it, God gives us direction. The God who saves us, the God who puts us on a solid place, is then the God who guides and directs with tender love. God who helps us to know what the next right step is, what the next right prayer is, what the next right thought is, what the next right action is. A God who shows us a way beyond and through, even in the midst of our hurt, even when the losing and the finding is all mixed together. God says, follow me and I will show you the way. Order my steps, O Lord. And God answers and says, I am guiding your steps. Step with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to go with me. I want Jesus to move with me. I want Jesus to pray with me. He brought me out of the miry clay and set my feet on the rock to stay and then leads to greater strength and courage and hope. That is who our God is on this 9-11 today. Trust in the hand that reaches. Trust in the rock on which we stand. Trust in the inner voice of love and the Holy Spirit who guides and leads. Even in the midst of loss, our future is entrusted to the God who saves and the God who places us on solid ground and the God who directs. Anthony Showalter was a beloved music teacher who also liked to write music. Loved music a lot, but even more loved the students and those who sung the music. He went around teaching music in different churches. It was one of his gifts that he brought back to the community. One night he was teaching music in a church and when he got home that night there were two letters waiting for him. They were from two of his favorite students. He opened the first letter and that student wrote in their letter that their spouse had died. His heart immediately began to reach out in prayer to that one. He opened the second letter And that student also had lost their partner. He wanted to know how he could support these students. So he looked to scripture and began to search and asked God to lead him and guide him. Anthony came to Deuteronomy 33, 27, which says, The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He began to meditate on that and reflect on that. And then some words begin to flow from that scripture through his heart. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. He continued to just sing that song in his heart and it so filled him that he couldn't think of any verses to write. So he reached out to his friend Elisha, who was also a strong writer, and gave him the chorus and said, do you have some words that could go with this, words that could comfort these two students who have lost their beloveds? And Elisha then wrote these words. What a fellowship. What a community. What a covenant. What a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. 
What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. When you're hurting, lean. When you're grieving, lean. When you're discouraged, lean. When you're feeling hopeless, lean. When you're depressed, lean. When everything seems to be falling down, lean because those everlasting arms will lean back. We have a God who searches with us to find what is lost. A God who celebrates with us when we do find and when we have yet to find what is lost, God says to us, lean, and I will hold you with my everlasting arms. Our beloved from 15 years ago are held in those everlasting arms. Those who grieve are held in those everlasting arms. And we, the people of God, are held in those everlasting arms. Stand on that rock and know that all you need is what you already have. Amen. Amen. And so we offer today these healing waters of baptism, waters of rejoicing and renewal and hope. And we offer for you here today this oil and laying on of hands, this balm in Gilead, healing, and this guiding presence of the Holy Spirit. During this time of response today, I would invite you to think about the things you have found in your life and be grateful for them. Count them. Say thank you to God. And then think about those things that you're still searching for and ask God to give you the guidance that you need in this search. Our pastoral care ministers will be here to pray with you, for you, or simply be there where you are listening and seeing where God is today at this time. Please rise as you're able.